Hello and welcome to the home of Invoke. Welcome to this, our fourth uh, webinar in our series of, uh, of six webinars made spe uh, especially for uh, target groups. So this one is for quick service restaurants. My name is uh, Jens Bach and I'm a development chef here at uh, the Huno Factory in Denmark, where we uh, build the Invoke oven. And uh, just to get us started, today's webinar will be about the um, quick select recipes we have in our oven and the new care cycle system. We're going to cover a little bit of uh, food safety uh, and the cook, cook time correction uh, function, the intelligent cooking function we have on the Invoke. Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is uh, Tanya. And I'm so excited to join this webinar today. I'm, I'm the customer experience manager here at Hune. Um, yeah, and I'm going to join this webinar. Yeah. If you have any questions uh, during the next 30 minutes, please uh, just drop them uh, at a note and uh, we will ask, answer them as long as they come. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I think we should actually just uh, dive straight into it. Our lovely colleague, uh, Edwin Atkins, has made uh, this introduction to how you use your recipe uh, package uh, in the oven. So let's play the first uh, session here with Edwin and get into how we build our recipes. The Invoke oven has the option to put in recipes, programs for cooking, it holds uh, over a thousand recipes, so numerous options. Um, each recipe can have uh, as many different cooking steps as you wish. I always start with a preheat and then I go on to a note step, which is an information step, which gives information to the user of the oven uh, and then go on to the different cooking steps, which I will give an example of now. Uh, the benefits of using recipe programs is mainly that you will always get the same finished result when cooking your food and that is very important in our industry to make a recipe program for our chicken thighs from the home screen i choose recipes then i'm going to press the plus create recipe button name and description, and then I'm going to input our recipe name. So we'll call it chicken thighs. And we have the option to put in a description. So I'm gonna put boneless with skin. This information will be stored, ready for users of the oven to see. We have the option to put in an image. So I'll press the image and we go into a image bank that we can choose from. Choose those chicken bears. Groups, so can assign to a group or maybe create a new group, but we have chicken. So I'll choose that one. And I'll also create a new group, supermarket. A recipe can be a recipe can be added to as many groups as necessary. We can also press the star and make it a favorite. Press the plus button to save the information we put in. Now we need to start adding cooking steps to the recipe. I press the add step button and I always start with preheat. The chicken thighs, they're gonna create a lot of humidity. They're coming straight from the fridge. There's a lot of them. So I want quite a high preheat. So I'm gonna go for 210. It will preheat to 210 and hold it there. Put that in for two minutes. Hold it there for three minutes uh, so that the oven's nice and hot, ready to use. Then I will add another step and press the note step. This gives us the option to, again, convey information to the user of the oven. So I will insert trays. And then choose the 
insert icon. Press the tick to confirm. Then I'm going to add our first cooking step. So for the first cooking step, I'm going to cook in the combi mode. I'm going to cook high temperature, so we'll go 195. Uh, so we and add a little humidity. So we've got a very hot and humid environment for the chicken to start roasting in. And we'll give that 14 minutes to start with 100% fan speed. Then what I would like to do as a final step um, in the idea to get a nice crispy skin, I'm going to go with the convection. And again, I'm gonna go high temperature, 210 this time, open exhaust to let the air in, to get rid of any humidity, keep the fan speed high. And I'll give that 10 minutes as well to give us a nice crispy skin ready for serving. I press the tick to confirm. There's all my steps. I can change them if I wish or delete them. I can move them up and down as I see fit, but I'm happy with that recipe. I click the tick button to confirm and then my recipe is saved. I can go into my groups. I found my chicken. I've also got my supermarket. So if I press my supermarket, for example, there's my chicken thighs, press my recipe, press start, and the oven will start preheating, ready for my chicken. The preheat stage of the chicken cooking recipe has been reached. The oven is conveying the information to me that it said, insert the trays and it's showing me the large uh, insert tray icon. So I'll just continue to open the door using the two step safety feature to prevent myself getting burned. And I'll put the chicken in. Close the door and let the oven do the rest. So now the oven's telling me chicken's cooked. It's flashing yellow so I can, I can see from across the kitchen. Press the finish button. Open the door using the two-step safety mechanism. So as uh, Chef Edwin showed you here, there's a lot of benefits in using the recipe uh, function on the ovens, especially in the quick uh, service restaurants and use it to ensure that quality, uh, that standard of, standard of quality on your product every day, week in, week out, and uh, use it to help your staff uh, perform better in the kitchen, use it to save time and uh, yeah, just control your cooking. In a, in a large and busy kitchen. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There came a question. Um, how many recipes can I create? Yeah, so in the oven, uh, currently we have we have space for more than 1,500 recipes, actually. 1,500 recipes. 1,500, yeah. So yeah. you'll never run into a situation where yeah. you are, you're out of space. And um, uh, there's also almost an unlimited amount of steps you can put in to each recipe. Yeah. So they can be as long as, and complicated as you want, as your product or your, um, uh, your signature on your product uh, demands. But yeah, the memory bank is, is uh, plenty big. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, questions for now, that's it. Otherwise, we'll take uh, questions for recipes later on, of course. Um, I think we should uh, try and jump into the next topic for today, which is the intelligent cooking um, uh, help you can get, especially with your recipes. So the cook time correction, Tanya, yeah. maybe you can explain a little bit about this. Well, during a busy day, accidents can and will happen. Uh, but luckily, Invoke uh, have the cook time correction to help you. And let's just see what our product manager has to say about the, this feature.
cook time correction. It's a part we name adaptive cooking. It supports you if you have operators who by a mistake have loaded too few products or too many products into a predefined program. It could also be that they skip the preheating, but to ensure your products to have the same consistency and quality every time, cook time correction helps this by adding or deducting time throughout the process of the cooking cycle. All this to ensure a perfect result coming out of the oven. Yeah, so just a quick uh, run over about the functionalities of the cook time correction. Uh, and again, just to put emphasis on the benefits of this function is of course that do you have staff that has been disturbed maybe in the loading process of the oven? This will happen a lot, we yeah. all know that. In the busy everyday life, um, then the oven has a chance of correcting uh, and helping you through the recipe cook uh, so your product is not undercooked before serving. And again, have you maybe had not such a busy day mm -hmm. and you've loaded um, less products than you're used to and that you've maybe developed the recipe for, the oven will also help you by cutting down the cooking time and temperature even um, to ensure that perfect cook. Is there a question maybe? There came a question, will this function prolong the cooking time? Yeah, so most of the time cook time correction will function again during a disturbed loading process. Uh, a scenario we see a lot is of course also the, um, the lack of proper pre uh, preheating in the oven. Um, and this is mainly what cook time correction is built for. So yes, there will be a, a, a little bit of uh, prolonging uh, to your recipe. So, uh, so expect this, but it's also, it's a nice safety feature to have to make sure that your delicate products, uh, chicken, yeah. bake off, whatever it might be, it looks the same every time. Yeah. To focus on the results rather than the cooking time. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So no more questions here, but uh, Jens, does this also, does it work for all recipes or? Yeah, cook yeah. time correction functions, even in the simplest uh, recipes, maybe just one cooking step, cook uh, if you have it uh, turned on in your oven, which is very easy to do uh, in the standard settings, uh, cook time correction will, uh, will, will be functional. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's go to our next topic. Yeah. And uh, today we also want to cover a little bit about the food safety um, and how you can use your oven to help you control yeah. your, uh, your safety steps uh, in your cooking. So again, our product manager, Rasmus, has made uh, uh, a little introduction to this. So let's have a look at what he says. Yeah. For your food safety, we have the HACCP functionality. It's a method where we, in a PDF format, document the processes that you've made. So if you are having a recipe using Smart Chef, it actually automatically saves your food safety data. So it documents minute by minute which temperature the oven has been, if you're using the core probe, which temperature your product has been, and then you can look that up against your defined parameters. It's a smooth and easy way for you to always have your food safety by the hand. It's easily downloaded with a USB key directly from the oven or via the cloud system. On the oven, we can store 60 days of HACCP files. So you have two months to take out the data that you need to document your food safety. Yeah, so again, just a quick introduction into how we've looked at the food safety functions uh, in the new Invoke series. Uh, and we had a question in the chat, actually. Yeah. What information will this document include? Yeah, so the information in the PDF file is actually very straightforward. It's, of course, the uh, temperature uh, that the oven has been uh, running in, mm -hmm. and it's uh, the temperature of the core probe. Have you used it? And information about which recipe, of course, uh, the name and functions will also be included, and time. So you'll get a, a, a very easy to understand graph that will show you 
the uh, um, the climb of the temperature and then the temperature during the cook mm -hmm. uh, so you can see what has happened especially if you if you had a, a mishap or something has went wrong you can go in and see where exactly did this happen uh, what was the damage so have we gone too low in temperature is there something in the safety here that we need to take care of um, so it's it's a very easy to look at uh, file and again the pdf format is perfect so you can mm -hmm. put it on if you have a Mac or Windows, doesn't yeah. matter. It functions very easy. Yeah. So we heard that uh, Rasmus said that it will be stored for 60 days. Yeah. What could I do if I didn't get it up before the 60 days? Yeah. So we've taken the decision that 60 days is enough. So yeah. um, you have the possibility for two months uh, in your in your food safety uh, uh, role in the kitchen to uh, to get this information out and secure it yeah. if you want the security of uh, having it available at all times you could use our cloud solution okay. where it's very easy to do automatic backups uh, of your files and your um, and your HACCP files it's also a very good thing to have especially if you have a lot of ovens or maybe a chain where you need the ovens to be exactly the same with all the recipes uh, using the cloud solution yeah. will help you um, uh, make every oven uh, similar yeah so yeah Okay. Came another question. What if after yeah, it's the same uh, after mm. six days can I still uh, find have the files somewhere? So yeah. yeah. If we have the cloud. If you have the cloud, yeah. then uh, it's very easy to uh, to go into the cloud and just log on to each oven and pull down the files. Um, uh, it will actually also, if there is some greater mishap, it will also allow us here in the factory to help you from a distance. Uh, retrieving your data from the oven. Yeah. yeah? Okay. So yeah. I think we're ready to go on to the uh, introduction of our locked user interface. This is a great feature, especially in the QSR restaurants. Um, so let's have a quick look at this uh, at this introduction by Rasmus again. Yeah. To ease new operation, we have designed the UI, the user interface of the controller, to be lockable. This means that you can design how you want your start screen or your home screen to be designed. Whether you want to start it in the QSR mode, if you want to start it for manual mode, or lock down in recipes. You can also lock down the authorities to go in and change parameters. This can be highly beneficial if you work in an environment where you have a lot of users, but you would like to control the processes. To make the locked UI even more functional, we have made a menu bar in the base of the oven. In here, you can set up to five shortcuts, which allows you to tailor directly to your needs. Do you need to have easy access for the HACCP to be taken out? Do you need to have access to swap between functionalities but still be locked down? Or do you simply want the white button so you can dry off the screen and at the same time, no interference with the programs? Our locked user interface helps you set up your structured day every day. Yeah, so... Again, a quick introduction to how we use the lock user interface functions and um, great functionality to have in a chain where you have a lot of untrained staff, maybe new staff, younger staff even, yeah. um, where you you are allowed to uh, keep track of every step your oven does. And um, it's very easy to train new employees yeah. or uh, uh, non-trained employees as well. And in the basic kitchen, it, uh, it removes a lot of the the possibilities for mistakes and exactly. errors during exactly. the cooking. Yeah. Yeah. So no questions for no this questions. for now. No. Yeah. So are we ready to move on to the uh, care cycle and the maintenance of the other maybe? Let's do that. Let's yeah. do that. We have a short introduction also from uh, Rasmus here. So let's take a look.
care cycle. That's the new name of our washing system. It's a recirculating washing system that you can use by just touching this button. Care cycle consists of six main cleaning programs, three normal programs, two eco programs, and one turbo wash. It also has a descaling functionality of the cavity so that you can rinse down if there's some lime scale inside the cavity. The turbo wash is a 15 minute program where you in a busy restaurant, supermarket, or just for a quick wash down can use the turbo cleaning. You simply select and you follow the guide on the oven. Only 15 minutes and one tablet and you have a sparkling oven that are ready to cook your next items. If you have time and you can do the cleaning overnight, why not go eco and choose either eco or eco plus mode. This saves you power, water and chemicals and the oven is clean for you the next morning. In the cleaning cycles, we allow 90% of the water to be unfiltered. And if a little bit of scale slips through, we have a descaling function for the cavity, so you can get a nice and sparkling, shiny oven to produce your food in. Yeah, so a very nice video about how we use the new care cycle functions. We are, we are extremely excited about the new care cycle system and the yeah. closed drain system. Um, it's, uh, it's lovely to use, very easy to use, low on use of chemicals and water and uh, power as well, actually. So uh, we've had a f at least one, one question, question, I think, in the chat. How often should I wash the oven? Yeah, so the um, we have a recommendation that, you know, we rather like uh, a lot of, uh, of light washes than a few intense washes. Yeah. And uh, I think the, uh, the end use of the oven also has a financial benefit of using the LiDAR Definitely. programs a lot. So we recommend to wash the oven at least every second day. Uh, often we find that people use maybe the turbo or the uh, light wash every day, actually. And uh, this ensures that your oven uh, looks brand new for many years to come. And uh, it's very, again, light on chemicals and power and water usage. Yeah. yeah. Um, Asmus also here mentioned the D-scale. And uh, well, I have a D-scale tablet here. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, why is D-scale actually important? Yeah. So Rasmus touched a little bit about it when he said that, you know, 90% um, of the water during the wash mm -hmm. uh, runs outside the filter system, actually. So uh, we don't uh, use up the filter too, uh, too quickly. But this also sometimes allows a little bit of, of, uh, of lime scale, maybe, yeah. to enter the oven. And it's also actually just a safety um, a procedure to make sure that you have nothing in the oven that you don't want to be there. So, so it's ready to use. It's ready to use yeah. and it won't burn during cooking. Uh, so we just recommend that descaling, of course, if you see anything in the oven, use it, or maybe just use it once every second week, once a month. Um, yeah, it also depends on, on your local water quality as well. Yes. And then we also have the, the tablets, the cleaning tablets. Um, how, uh, how do I know how many tablets to put in? Yeah, so the, the oven will actually tell you this. We have a nice little uh, animation on the oven that, uh, that shows how many ta tablets will be used. Um, for five out of the six programs uh, on the uh, six and 10 tray ovens, it's actually the same It's just one tablet. Okay. And um, for the intense program, we will need two tablets. But again, the intense is not a, data, is not a daily uh, program you would use. So 95% of the time, you'll only need to get out one tablet yeah. to do a cleaning cycle. That's easy. Very easy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me see. So there were no more questions here. For now? For now. No. Oh, okay. So um, we hope that you've uh, enjoyed our little webinar here. And uh, of course, yeah. we are on again tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Please go in and follow us on Instagram. 
uh, take a look at all the new and exciting stuff we're bringing out alongside this new uh, series yeah, of and remember to sign up for a webinar also tomorrow same uh, same time yeah. and uh, we have a new exciting program for you yeah yeah i think that's uh, that it's that's it for now yeah should there come any questions or so we will uh, of course uh, answer them uh, afterwards or or as they come yeah yeah thank you so much you guys thank you